Hello everyone, thank you for attending this session. In this session, we'll talk about the jet lift mindset in software architecture. We'll talk about the moving from developer mindset to Arctic mindset, how to think like an Arctic. In this lecture, we'll talk, and you will have just two slides, but it's a comprehensive slides. And we will have a concrete sample about creating shopping cart from both perspectives, from the developer perspective and from the architect perspective. So let's move forward directly to the example. Let's assume that we have business requirement. This business, this business requirements, it's about creating shopping cart management. Shopping cart management means we have uh, an object called shopping cart and this considered as sub-module of your solution and you have all the um, data management uh, process that you will create for this uh, shopping cart so you will create shopping cart you will manage this shopping cart adding item to this shopping cart and accord accordingly you as a team leader you uh, assign this task to the developer so how the developer will think about this task Number one, he will think about creating the data models to achieve this shopping cart and uh, uh, yeah, and he make sure that he has completed uh, completed data model. And accordingly, he will create the API layer. The API layer will uh, be created using the uh, one of the commonly used development tools like .NET, like uh, Java. And accordingly, these APIs will take the responsibility for, for all the CRUD operations and the management operations of the uh, shopping cart management. And accordingly, um, you will create the front end pages or you will uh, deliver these APIs to the mobile team to consume in order to manage the uh, shopping cart. Accordingly, from developer perspective, this task considered as done. And this is the uh, mindset of the developer to make things done to make the technical tasks achieve the business requirements. And this is totally different than the architect mindset. So here the um, yani big shift in the mindset from developer to architect mindset, how you should think about an architect, uh, about your solution. And here we can recall in the previous in software engineering um, resources, the differentiation between the functional and non-functional requirements. And the core focus of the architect um, is to focus on the uh, quality attributes or what we call the non-functional requirements. The non-functional requirements are focusing on the quality of the architecture of the solution. And this is the main concern of the architect is to provide high quality solution that carry out the responsibility of the created solution or created solutions. So he is responsible about the quality of the infrastructure of the solution, which we call the architecture of the solution, the architecture of the solution equivalent to the infrastructure of uh, the solution, considering creating a lot of quality attributes. So according to the uh, uh, number of quality attributes that achieved within your architecture, you have successful to deliver uh, yeah, a highly matured solution. And this is the role of the architect. So let's move forward for how the architect uh, can think, uh, should think about this solution. Number one, the architect should think about the architecture requirements abstraction. What do we mean by architecture requirements abstraction? Uh, abstraction means uh, removing the details of the uh, business requirements in order to increase the reusability of the solution. So number one, the architect will focus about uh, the reusability of the generated solutions in order to make a core infrastructure that should be reused in the future by other modules or other solutions and that will impact uh, yani positively on the uh, cost of the solution and also the maintainability of the solution maintaining on a specific component will increase the maintainability of the overall solution and decrease the cost of the solution and accordingly, he will think about removing the details. So it was shopping cart management. So he removed shopping and create cart management. And accordingly, he, add new, he added new object called cart types. 
so he will generate a component of cart management and each cart can have different type uh, like shopping cart or uh, violation carts you should uh, you can uh, utilize this cart management object in different purposes and for sure in different in different solutions and accordingly he increased the reusability and this is one of the core uh, quality attributes of the solution so number one he increased the reusability of the solution uh, upon adding new component called cart management and each cart has its different type uh, number two he moved forward for the configurability of the uh, solution and this is also one of the uh, uh, non-functional requirements that increase the operationalization of the solution accordingly uh, what do we mean by configurability that you can have external configuration for this cart management in order to enable the configuration and prevent the revisiting the the solution uh, each time you need to implement change within this solution and that also increase the reusability of the solution uh, minimize the operational overheads uh, uh, decrease the shutdown cost of the solution if you need to uh, conduct a change upon this uh, within these features so accord accordingly you will create configuration model for this uh, cart management which one is enabled which one is uh, disabled the different attributes of this uh, cart management and accordingly he will think about the correlated design patterns that enable the configuration which we have discussed previously in the microservices design patterns we discuss about the external configuration design pattern to have uh, a repository uh, for the configuration of the services wherever uh, it's within the database or within your uh, cluster and accordingly uh, you know what if you have external configuration but you need to configure it in now and apply it on the production now so you need to re to implement the reconfiguration design pattern and uh, you know, real-time reconfiguration design pattern upon the change on uh, uh, upon the change of the configuration it should be applied immediately on the production show so he will think uh, about implementing the correlated design patterns to achieve such uh, uh, non-functional requirements. So this required uh, additional knowledge uh, within the um, uh, technical domain to increase your capabilities and your skills to think about large scale solution. And by the way, this is uh, suitable more for the uh, medium to large enterprise. So number one, we think about the abstraction of the requirements, which increase the reusability and decrease the cost of the solution. We move forward for the configurability and think about the operationalization and which design patterns we will use to achieve the configurability. And moving forward, he will think about the performance of the solution. Accordingly, he will think about adding new uh, uh, models regarding the caching. So he will discuss uh, and uh, discuss with the team and think about which uh, uh, caching model he can apply. So, for example, he will select Redis instead of uh, um, uh, Hazelcast uh, or instead uh, um, uh, of uh, all different provided caching techniques within the market. And accordingly, he will think about the uh, related design patterns that touch the uh, caching approach. For example, the cache aside. Uh, he uh, he will think about the index table, how to index the uh, data models in order to increase the performance. Uh, CQRS uh, design pattern, the segregation between the commands and the query within the uh, database. So thinking about the quality attribute of the performance, he will, uh, it implies study for the uh, relevant techniques within the market and selecting the proper approach and the correlated design pattern patterns accordingly and sorry upon that he will think about new non-functional requirements it's regarding the security how he can provide a secure solution within the market so he will think about encryption of the uh, any both data in transit and data at rest Data in transit, yani the communication channel between the front end and uh, the back end, how he can see, provide secure communication. And that uh, yani lies uh, yani within the network and also within the uh, development teams 
responsibilities for providing uh, encryption model for encrypting the payload for the APIs, how he can encrypt uh, this payload and which encryption uh, technique he can use. And um, uh, shall the development team um, develop encryption module to be reused across the team member, across all the teams or not? So he will provide uh, encryption module within the solution and he will think about uh, the security for the front end uh, solution. So he will think about front end obfuscation. And according to the uh, best practices, he will uh, uh, search about uh, the uh, commonly uh, used best practices for securing the API layer. So he will think about the OWASP API to implement its top 10 vulnerabilities uh, best practices to implement secured solution. So this is the mindset of the uh, architect. It's a totally different uh, uh, from the developer uh, mindset. Uh, he is thinking about the uh, quality attributes of the solution. Uh, uh, regarding the security, he will think about provide about the related correlated design patterns that increase the solution security, like federated identity, which we have discussed in the microservice architecture, and the valid key and the gateway of loading to uh, have um, dedicated part or portion of the solution to govern the, the security across all the microservices. So this mindset yani, will be cascaded on all modules, on all solutions, and upon that you will guarantee that you have concrete and uh, high quality solution that can carry out the uh, uh, large scale business uh, to be imp implemented for the government, se uh, government sector or B2C uh, solutions. We will move forward to the next slide to complete the journey of the uh, architect of thinking about the architect. He will think about the reliabil reliability of the solution and the full tolerance of the solution. Accordingly, <clears throat> he will think about how he can provide fault tolerance solution. If part of the solution uh, yani will fail, he will um, uh, the, the, the solution will continue uh, uh, in the operation uh, except this portion of the uh, solution. So he will think about the related design patterns and architecture patterns that can enable for him this uh, uh, architecture uh, quality attribute. So he will think about implementing uh, a set of design patterns, for example, event sourcing. And then if there is a, a connectivity issue with external party, he will apply the retry uh, design pattern type. What if the, the retrial approach uh, fail to uh, succeed? Uh, he will apply the circuit breaker to prevent impacting unlimited number of calls to this external calls. And accordingly, you have an yani, incomplete data models and incomplete process. So you will implement a scheduler agent, which will require here uh, job components to be implemented on the ground and to be part of the solution to compensate the uh, uh, incompleted transactions. Uh, and in some cases, if you have streamline of different uh, calls between uh, different mi uh, different uh, microservices, and this streamline of APIs across microservices, it collaborate to achieve specific business objectives, you need to implement Zaga design pattern in order to uh, make sure that if there is a failure within the uh, uh, this streamline, you can compensate and you can roll back all the uh, streamline of the uh, operations without touching the real physical database. So he, after he think about the security, he's thinking about the reliability of the solution and the fault tolerance. And that imply also uh, the, the way of thinking about the architecture. If you need to, uh, yani, to have full tolerance uh, within your uh, architecture, you should think about microservice architecture instead of monolithic solution. As microservice architecture, each microservice is totally different than the uh, uh, other microservices, and it has its dedicated database that interact with. So if you have failure within one microservice, it's totally separated from the uh, uh, solution architecture. Moving forward, he will think about the uh, observability of the solution. What is actually happening right now uh, within the solution? So he will think about 
I need to have streamline of actions that uh, tell me the story about the solution. What, uh, yani, what is going on right now within the solution? I need to understand the behavior of the solution. Accordingly, this uh, observability, it's, it consists of two uh, big portions, business logs and technical logs. The business logs, it represents who, do what, when, and how within your uh, solution and uh, that should be part of the of your solution reports and moreover uh, you should uh, have also logs regarding the technical tasks uh, sorry the technical uh, uh, communication between uh, the uh, the your components like the api calls the external calls for the integration uh, the failure within the solution the exception handling within the solution so you should have all these uh, uh, yani techniques to um, have full vis full visibility of what uh, is going on within your solution accordingly you have to implement one of elk or efk or loki as uh, uh, yani, um, uh, uh, monitoring platforms for your uh, solutions to log all uh, yani, the actions within your solution. So he's thinking about, I need to have the um, uh, visibility of what is going on within my architecture. And finally, the uh, portability, fi not fi finally within this uh, uh, session, but the quality attributes, it's, it's uh, very complicated. It's, uh, there is uh, a lot of quality attributes that uh, we should consider within our architecture, but in order to uh, keep you um, yani, uh, aligned with the mindset, we have these samples of the uh, architecture uh, attributes. So uh, he will think about the portability of the solution um, in order to achieve that he will think about the uh, implementing the event driven architecture and implementing event driven architecture that uh, means you can deploy part of the solution uh, uh, on a specific platform and the other uh, portion of the solution it can be part of other uh, platform so accordingly you should implement event driven architecture uh, and event-driven architecture that uh, uh, will remove the dependencies between the uh, components, and uh, since it it removes the it removes the uh, dependencies between the components, uh, you should apply event-driven architecture, and that can uh, that will be achieved using one of the event streaming um, uh, platforms like Kafka. So you should implement publisher model and consumer model, and that can be governed within your architecture. In addition, uh, in order to achieve the portability, you should th think about the architecture model. You will apply microservice architecture, uh, yani upon containerization uh, platforms. So accordingly, you think from the architect perspective, or yani, you think about uh, all the quality uh, attributes of the solution, all the non-functional uh, requirements of the solution, increasing the reusability of the uh, solution. And this is really the way that the architect should think about the uh, solution is to increase the quality of the infrastructure that carry the these business modules and these business solutions. So, Accordingly, this is the architect mindset, how the architect should think about the solution. It's totally different than the developer that think about just implementing the assigned tasks, um, uh, segregate between the different layers, implement the uh, technical tasks at the database layer, at the back end layers, and at the front end layer. Uh, so this is the, the approach that you should think uh, about the solution uh, like an architect. Uh, I hope uh, yani, uh, I delivered my, uh, my idea uh, about the architect mindset uh, to all of the participants. Thank you. And if you have uh, any question, yani, please feel free to drop it to me directly. Thank you.